Hi everyone, it's Kalen from Kite, the AI-powered coding assistant. And in this video, we're gonna compare experiences from hiring different developers on Fiverr to build a web app in Python. Fiverr is an online marketplace for freelance services where you can pay people to do tasks for you, such as web development or graphic design or drawing a picture, whatever it is really. And Fiverr made its brand off of bidding on tasks or projects less than $5, but everyone knows now that you'll often pay more than $5 for your project. So what we've done is chose two developers based on their prices. So we can then compare the results of a more affordable developer and a more premium developer. We're thinking that when you're launching a new product or working on a larger project, you might have to think about hiring outside help on a place like Fiverr. So we hope this exercise is helpful so you can see what your money gets you if you pay extra, and you can see some potential pitfalls in working with a remote developer. Well, let's get into it, and hopefully we'll be pleasantly surprised with the quality of their code. We give the same task to both developers so we can easily compare them. We're going to ask the developers to make us a web app with this format. We're thinking a website like this will help us promote our YouTube channel. We're going to ask the developers to add a form where someone can input their name and email and have the website save the data and return a thank you message. We also want the YouTube thumbnails animated and the local weather of the user's location. Let's go on Fiverr.com and see who's available. We can search for web developers in Fiverr and see all the developers who are willing to help us. Let's apply a filter to make sure that they're developing in Python. There are a lot of developers on Fiverr that are willing to help us at various price points using different technologies such as Django and Flask. For the first developer, let's try to get something on the cheaper side. After some searching, we found our first developer at the lower end of our price range. Their profile here says that they'll develop a Django website for us. So let's send them the specs of our project. In our specification, we provide the link to our website mockup and convey the acceptance criteria such as the form, the YouTube thumbnails, the local weather of the user's location, and we want to run our web app locally. We also request the source code. Here we found another developer that is willing to help us with our Python web app, and they're more expensive than the first developer. The profile says that they can make a fast Django website. All right, let's send in the exact same specs as the first developer so we can compare the two developers. Before we see what our developers send back to us, I wanna take a minute to talk about Kite, which is an AI powered coding assistant that'll help you code faster and smarter. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. All right, let's check out the less expensive developer and see what their web app is doing for us. So our first developer used Django to make their web app. And when we open it, we see a form to enter our name and email. And there's a few of our YouTube thumbnails and the weather of our current location. So that's good, you know, not bad. At least we're hitting all of our main specs here. Let's test this app out a little bit more though. I'll try using the name and email form and see what happens. Okay, when we submit our information, we get a new page that thanks us. However, this thank you page is pretty plain here with just text and there's no UI option to return back to the home page. We just have to click back on the browser. Uh, I guess that's just really not that ideal. Uh, when we enter a name and email, we have the option to send an email to the person who submitted the form. However, there's no way for an admin of the site to see all the emails and names of people who use the form in one place. Now, we see the weather at the bottom of the page for a current location. The weather looks good, but there's a lot of blank space in the website, and there's actually no title on the entire page, so that's not great. There's also no animation for the thumbnails as we initially specified, and they just seem to have been placed here. Overall, this web app is pretty standard. It has a lot of white space, 
but it's missing some of the functionality we requested, which is disappointing. The web app itself doesn't follow the format because there's no title, no color scheme, and it's pretty much the same throughout the web app. I guess at this point, just playing around with the finished product that this guy sent over, I'm not super disappointed considering the price point. I paid for it, but there's still a lot left to be completed and refined here. So let's take a deeper dive into their Django code now and see what they did to make the web app. Taking a look at forms.py, we see that the contact form is a simple form with two required fields, the email field and the name field. We then take a look at models.py and we see that our developer made a simple model named contact form info for our contact form. In Django, a model is a special kind of object that Django will store in a database. For our developer, this guy included the name and email as well as made the string representation of the model just the name. That's, you know, pretty sound. Let's take a look at views.py to see how our developer went from a user input to saving the information in the model. The first function we see is a get function. This function is called when a user sends a get request to the website. This occurs when they're loading the web page for the first time. And we see that our developer constructs a new contact form and adds it to the current context and renders the response. This adds a new contact form to index.html where it says message contact form. A post request is sent when we submit the form on the web page. Our developer gets the contact form from the post request and first checks if it's valid. If it is, they extract the name and email from the fields that we outlined in forms.py, so that's good. And using the extracted information, the developer creates a new contact info form model and saves it. Then the developer renders the success HTML with P as the contact info form. Opening success.html, we see that our output message depends on p.name and p.email, which are the attributes of the contact info form model. If at any point our post failed, which may happen if our form isn't valid, the developer simply renders the index with a contact form. All said and done, our first developer was able to satisfy almost all of our criteria. However, there was some room for improvement, especially with the formatting and the navigation on the web pages. And the biggest thing for me was the fact that there's no admin view of subscribers. You know, if I'm running a website, I need to have an admin view. But let's now turn our attention to our second developer and see what he gave us. All right, on to the second developer. Let's check out their web app. Our second developer also used Django to make their web app, and we see a format similar to our template. We see a form to put your name and email. We see our YouTube thumbnails and a section for the weather. We also see a kite logo and a button to visit our channel, which is great. Let's first try out the submission form and put a name and email and see what's happening. After submitting, we get a pop-up message with thanks us for registering. That's always good. The second developer added an admin section in our website that allows us to see all of the users who submitted their names and emails to our website. This is really helpful. There's a subscriber section that saves all of the inputted names and emails. The next thing we see are the thumbnails properly formatted. We also see an animation for each of the images when we hover over the image and we can click on the image to get the original YouTube video. At the bottom of the screen, we see the weather of our current location. The weather display looks nice and clean and is formatted well for different screen sizes. That's pretty good. And now let's take a look at our developer's code and see how they did. So similar to the first developer in forms.py, we see a form with a name and email for a user to input. This form also has a placeholder as an attribute for the fields. Also, in models.py, we see a similar model to represent a subscriber that has the name and email of the visitor. This developer chose a different string representation of a subscriber, where they add the name to the email with an underscore in between. Let's check out views.py file and see how our developer interacted with the forms and models. We see two functions, homepage and submit. The homepage function is a simple function that renders the homepage.html. The submit function is one that takes in the data inputted from the form and renders a new screen. If the request method is a post, the developer gets the name and email from the form and uses that information to create a new subscribers object. Then the developer renders the home page again, now with a success message and the username. Checking out homepage.html, we can see an if clause to check if there was a success message, and if it is, 
we have a drop down window that thanks the user. If the request was not a post, then developer just renders the home page with a new form. All in all, our second developer was able to satisfy all of our criteria, including the admin list view of subscribers, and also went a bit above and beyond expectations with some of the UI elements. Even though this developer's rate was six times higher than our first developer, the improvement in the outcome I think was worth it. Neither developer provided any test cases in their test.py file. When hiring a developer to make a web app, the tests that they create indicate the different edge cases that they considered and provide an outline for conditions under which our program will function as expected. We definitely recommend encouraging developers you work with to create these test cases. I hope you enjoyed this video of us going on Fiverr and asking two people to make us a Django web app. We'll see you in the next video and make sure to download Kite so you can code faster and smarter.